Interesting. Well, it's and it really constitutes like what's the um, it's such a fascinating thing because what's the essence of a person? My old um, artist friends used to call us all sub personality coalitions. To your point, here's me mm-hmm. to my family. Here's me on social, which is a whole often not real avatar, depending mm-hmm. again, I don't even say what's real. That's like very pretentious. But, you know, what what is the actual person? This mixture of physical form, thoughts. This combination that lends to consciousness. So I would say it's interesting what you said about the teenage part. I'd like to ask you about this, the editing. Because one thing I did when I was in college, being a philosophical English major myself, I wrote a letter to myself when I turned 50 to like not be the guy that all the 50-year-olds were at my time who were all pushing me away. You know what I'm saying, normal mm-hmm. young, you, you yeah. don't know what's going on. And it was, it was totally cool, but this, again, is just an artistic thing that I did. But the editing of your life and the way that you present it is a really interesting question. Not that we necessarily, if like if I want to share this with my family, let's say, and, and it's the idea of my children and grandchildren and the ancestor thing, that would be something I would want to come close to, authenticity, uh, put big yeah. quotes around that, as I could. And, but, and then in the other end, if somebody is just sort of famous, a writer, and I, I don't want to, this all sounds negative. I don't mean to put it down, but they want to present an image of themselves, which is what you present to the public that gets done. So this editing process is really interesting. Our, do you yep. f- sort of see this as um, an iterative process that somebody might go over? You know, let's say I started, you start now, you're 34, 50, whatever age would they come back and update it and would that add to their almost like a small language model evolving around that person yeah it's interesting um i mean yes i think i I think we correct ourselves and we edit ourselves Mm -hmm. regularly there there are people who change identities change genders change you know quite a lot of stuff about themselves to become new versions of ourselves there are people who change you know their names and their entire personas to you know to pursue a goal So I think we we already do edit ourselves a little bit. I don't think, you know, when I say about like taking out the the, the text from 1525, I think I mean more like the the, the spoken words I would have said in that time, whereas Mm -hmm. the facts of that time, I think are still relevant. You know, if I said, oh, when I was 19, I went to Turkey, for example, you know, and that would still be a relevant fact. But would I think maybe some of the things I said then may be relevant. Um, but yeah, I think we, 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 we edit ourselves anyway. I think that our memory itself is fallible no matter what. And, totally. uh, and there are a lot of things that we definitely forget that data wouldn't locations, maybe even like taking food photos of food. Like if I tried to even remember what I had like a month ago for food in a particular place, I wouldn't be able to say, yeah. but if I took a photo of it, then uh, a replica with access to that the data would be able to say, oh, Dan, you had, you know, you had a nice grilled, grilled fish. Um, so it is memory and the ability and, and quality and how, uh, how the replicas of us would be better at things than us and maybe, you know, worse at other things. The certain nuances would be different, obviously, and and certain things we could make them. You know, we could say, oh, you know, you are, you know, Dan Thompson, you are the CEO of Sensei, and instead of saying, you know, quite rightly, I, I you, you are an introvert, it could say you're an extrovert, and that would become your the, the replica's personality going forward. And I think that that does tie into the the idea of who we present ourselves as versus who we really are or who other people perceive us to be. And so there is always going to be a balance of that. And I think some people will want to edit themselves. Some people will want to present themselves in a different way as they have throughout history. Uh, no one obviously sees themselves as the bad guy at any point, <laughs> even though there, there must be. Um, so it's, it's, it's a fascinating concept to think like, you know, what where, where does the true identity sit in the mix of all of that and how... How do you best create it? And be beyond that, how you know when we're talking about bad guys specifically, what if there are traits in certain people that they think is intrinsic to their personality that other people, if not the majority of people, disagree with? Uh, yeah. Let's say you know Nazism, for example. You know, well, I think we can all pretty much agree that Nazism is is not the not an ideal route to go down. Uh, but some people have a lot of sympathies for it, and you know, often almost identify as it. 
does that mean that we should you know allow that does that mean that we should you know enable that in replicas to be possible uh there's lots of human traits that follow that same kind of like you know gray area of like uh would we should we could we have that as a you know um as an implement implementable personality trait and so it becomes it does it's, it's a very difficult challenge it's one that we you know yeah. obviously just yeah. discuss a lot and it's, it's super fascinating you know because the one how we want to create these lifelike replicas that are as true to the person as possible stopping short of creating ai hitler but at the same time but <laughs> i think we've got a line somewhere right somewhere around there uh, where, where, hitler, right. uh yeah i think because <laughs> the thing is like you know you, you look at the you look at the chat gpts and the claws of the world you know they're you can no longer fight with them, right? You can't swear at them. You can't, uh, there's, there's certain things they won't do back to you. They won't swear at you. They won't necessarily talk dirty. Their content filters are uh, extremely restrictive for good reason. They want to be as safe as possible and not cause harm while it's still evolving. But that's a lot of humanity that you're you're taking out. A lot of a lot of emotional <laughs> aspects that people in, do learn from and interact with. And it, it reminds you that you are dealing with a chatbot as opposed to a human. And so when you're replicating humans and you're trying to create these AI lifelike replicas, you really do want it to have some, uh, at least some of that back in. You want it to have the emotions. You want it to have at least the perception of emotions. Uh, you want it to, you know, be able to fight with you. You want to have a little like argument with it if, yeah. if you want to. You want it to explore some of the more uh, risky topics that, you know, the other ones wouldn't. So there's a lot of this that goes into creating your, your replica that uh, just is a lot of nuances and it's obviously a huge learning curve. And, you know, we, we, we have an idea of how far we, we would let it go, but the reality is it's, it's a constantly like philosophical discussion on what should we do? What can we do? And, you know, where do we draw the lines and, you know, what, what is it that we, we would let people do to rep fully truly represent them? Because the, the ultimate goal of these is to be, a reflection of yourself but beyond that a, a an actual agent for you like your personal assistant your some a utility for you so when that you know becomes the reality it will actually be acting on your behalf like a personal assistant and if you've authorized it to do and interact with the world in a certain way but it's not anything like you there's a bit of a you know kind of a, a gray area because it's kind of making up things as it goes along whereas if it is <laughs> proven to be you know similar enough and it's a whole other level of kind of kyc it's kind of like uh sort of kyc it's more like you know proof of personality right it's almost like is this replica actually similar enough to you that it directly represents who you are and can and because down the line replicas and, and ai agents will essentially become like their own legal entities so if we have my ai agent acting on my behalf it should be similar enough to me that it could be taken at its word so that it can do things for me and be verified to do those things for me, uh, you know, with my permission. So many levels to this. Def 